I'm very lucky to have a lovely workshop on the edge of the Cotswolds where we restore square pianos. These instruments were made for a hundred years from around 1760 and were incredibly popular. This short video follows a Jacobus Ball square piano circa 1800 and gives you a glimpse into the sort of things that are required to return an instrument to full playing condition. We have a wide range of tools specific to square pianos and historical craftsmanship gathered over the 30 years of working with these instruments. Even the most structurally damaged instrument can be repaired, although there's a delicate balance between conservation and repair, particularly when an instrument has great historical interest. Here the remnants of an original label with the maker's direction and care and maintenance still survives. This piano has most of its action pieces, but many parts were not functioning correctly, and the strings have been replaced with too heavy a gauge, causing damage to the soundboard. It sounds really awful. The scaling of the instrument is measured, noting any original strings. Then the piano is detuned and the old strings removed, keeping the originals for future interest. The action is assessed as to what materials can be kept and where replacements are necessary. Matches are found for these missing ivories from our large stock of old materials and the whole assembly is cleaned. Experience allows us to remove the soundboard without damage. This is far more time consuming than is possible to show in a short video. The original animal glue is very strong but reversible which makes repairs like this possible. We use the same glue for the same reasons. Removing the soundboard means that we can re-glue the bridge which is lifted and realign and glue these failed joints between the soundboard planks. Poor recent repairs like these are discarded. Fresh leather is then chosen to replace the perished hammer hinges. Steaming the old leather hinge apart ensures a crisp fitting for the new leather. These details are crucial for the instrument's performance and touch. The repaired soundboard is put back into place. Eyes are hand wound for each string and bass strings are hand spun on our machine. Fitting new strings without a hole in the tuning pin is a challenge for the inexperienced. The trick is to maintain a high tension on the string at all times. Holes should not be drilled into tuning pins originally without them as they are too thin and they will break under the tension. We keep a very large and well indexed photo collection to aid our research and use custom software to calculate string tensions and suitable gauges. Our library of relevant academic literature is also great for reference. Each repair differs considerably and depends upon how well the instrument has been cared for in the past. Our extensive stocks include doe, calf and elk leather, all used for their different properties within the piano, and there's a huge range of other materials required, from spruce and mahogany to brass, silk and cloth. A great deal of effort is made to conserve items where possible, or to source and reinstate the traditional choices. A new music shelf was constructed based on witness marks where the original once was and the care and maintenance label reinstated after conservation by our friend Moira, a paper restorer. The final decorative touches and details included replacement medallions on the stand where signs of the original once were, a good wax and buff to the casework and the fine regulation of the action for a good playing response. This wonderful picture by Zoffany, painted in 1775, celebrates the engagement of Lord Cooper and Anne Gore. 
instruments featured in many of his paintings, including the square piano. It would have been a brand new novelty at the time, and very similar in date to the Jacobus Ball we've just restored, and for fun we've recreated the scene. Oh, that is a, such an amazing costume, I want to have a really good place. Wow. 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 